Okay, good morning, grade eight students. This is round two, my first round. Uh, my uh, video cut me off, so we're gonna try and do this a little bit faster and see if we can get through this before my video cuts me off. This is, we're gonna do uh, lesson 10.1 today. Uh, this lesson has some tricky parts to it. We're gonna learn about equ what equidistant means and what a perpendicular bisector is. That's at the first part. Then we're gonna do some steps. I'm gonna help you with uh, a bunch of the steps and then you'll have to finish them on your own and answer the reflecting questions. But if you pay attention and understand what we're doing with the steps, the reflecting questions shouldn't be too difficult. Again, Mr. Roofer and I will be available to help you out with this. So here's the explore the math. Three houses are going to be built at the end of a street in a new subdivision. For safety, a straight light is will be placed in a position that is equidistant. That means the same distance from the three houses. The diagram below shows the positions of the houses. So the big question we're trying to figure out is where should the street light be placed? So on a large piece of paper, we're going to do step A together. We're going to uh, make this diagram like we see below. So it doesn't really matter where you put your points, just make them something close to what the diagram looks like. X, Y, and Z are there. Okay. It says mark three points that are equidistant from points X and Y. Use any method you wish. Check by measuring and adjust the points if necessary. So. Um, I would, you're going to need a ruler for this activity, uh, a protractor is going to be necessary, and a compass. If you can find those three things, that would be great. Thankfully, Judah brought his uh, geometry set home at March break, so I've got his today. Okay, So we're going to be working between X and Y. It is one of the later steps, but I'm going to go ahead and connect X and Y, making a line segment. It'll make it easier for us to measure the midpoint. So the first equidistant point is probably the easiest one. We're just going to take our ruler and measure the length of that line. I get about 8.3 centimeters. So that means about 4.15, anywhere between 4.1, 4.2. It's going to be accurate enough. So there is one equidistant point from X to that point and Y to that point. And we can use our protractor to get another point. If I put my protractor on that line and line up the midpoint at the 90 degree line and then draw another dot at 90 degrees, this point should also be equidistant from X and Y. So if I check this, that point there, that's about 6.6 .6 centimeters from X and 6.6 .6 centimeters from Y. Okay, And the third method we can use is we can set our protractor, or sorry, not our protractor, our compass, so that the length of, from the, the point to the pencil is a little bit longer than the midpoint, and draw an arc with my point on Y, and then move the point over to X and draw another arc with the point on X. Where those two arcs cross, should be another equidistant point. So if I measure with my ruler, that is about 5.7. And here, that's about 5.6, 5.7 as well. So it's very close. Okay, so let's look at the next step. We've got our three points in step B. Step C says we're supposed to draw a line connecting all three of those points. And I would draw your line so you have more of the line down toward the bottom because you're going to need it down there. Let's look at step D. Pick two other points on your line. Show that each point is also equidistant from X and Y. So I'll choose this point here. What this step is, is having us prove is that any line on our perpendicular bisector, because this is a line that crosses another line at 90 degrees, will be equidistant. So there's 6.9. And there's 6.9 as well. I'll just pick one more point so that we've done the step. Here's another point. It is 4.7 centimeters from X and 4.7 centimeters, centimeters from Y. Okay. In step E, it says to join X and Y together. And then it asks, how do you know that your line is the perpendicular bisector of X and Y? Well, I know that by putting my protractor here and I can measure that this line is along my zero line and my perpendicular bisector goes right through at 90 degrees. So that means that this is a perpendicular bisector. In step G and H, you're gonna do the exact same thing between either Y and Z or X and Z. I'd recommend Y and Z 
It'll look a lot, it'll look exactly like the diagram of the girl uh, just below step G. And then you're going to do what she's doing by following the steps. You're gonna use your compass to draw a line from wherever these two perpendicular bisectors cross and, and it, you'll find something happens with all three points. After you've done that, answer the three re reflecting questions. Mr. Roofer and I will be available on Schoology today. If you need any help, just post a message and we'll try to help you as best we can. Good luck. Bye.